number one. Let's stand together. Good to have you in the house of the Lord today. Welcome to worship service at Greater Vision this morning. It's so good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. 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 Why don't we just lift our hands and just worship him this morning and welcome his presence. Lord, we thank you for this day, for this privilege to be in your house, to be able to bless your name together, to be able to receive the strength of fellow believers. Hallelujah. Have your way, God, in my life today. Lord, use my praise and worship as a vehicle today to bless someone's life. In the name of Jesus. Why don't you clap your hands to the Lord? Hallelujah. He is worthy of all praise. Praise God. Man, it's good to be home today with each of you. So thankful for uh, Brother Pulliam and Brother Ryan and uh, Sister Judy and Sister Mariah and this praise team and everyone who just uh, stepped up and, and carried this thing while we were away. And the truth is, you carry it while we're here. And we're so thankful for what all of you are doing for the kingdom of God. Amen. I want to read to you this morning from Psalm 33, just one verse. It says, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. That's not a word that we use today, the word comely, but it just means you're a child of God and praise looks good on you. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Praise looks good on you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's offer up that praise one more time as Sister Star comes to lead us in prayer for God's will. Let's lift up that praise to the Lord. Oh, we love you, God. We rejoice in you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just take the time right now to pray that God will open our eyes and open our hearts and open our minds for his will to happen in this service today. We know that he is able and that he will do what he wants to happen in the service if we open up our heart and mind. God, you see our will. God, that this will be broken, God. You know what needs to be done, God. Oh, God, we pray in Jesus' name. going on in our lives at all times, every one of us, and sometimes we find ourselves very weak. Sometimes we find ourselves under a very heavy burden. Yes. I find myself there today, but I'm not going to stay there because the Bible says that in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. Yes. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And today I want to pray that God's perfect strength moves into this place, takes over this place, takes over my life and your life. And I want to pray that prayer today that God's strength be made perfect in my weakness. Yes. yes. Oh, Jesus, I worship you today. Hallelujah. I praise you, Jesus.
place today as we give our praise to the Lord and we just forget about the cares of this life for a little while. Psalm 34 and 1 through 3 says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Jesus is worthy of our praise.
impact that we can have if we really get what that song says. Hallelujah. There wouldn't really be anybody around here that doesn't know about That's Jesus. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Right now we're going to turn this service over into a time of prayer. I don't have any specific needs here. There are some listed up on the board. We need to remember to pray for Sister Ada. She's sick today. And uh, Kenny Prenzel, his heart. He needs prayer for his heart. And also we need to remember continuously our community. If you have a need in this place today, and I know that we all have needs of some sort, just give that need to God today by surrendering and lifting your hands and just letting him have his way in it. I know there's things in my life, there's imperfections in my life, and I know that we all struggle and deal with things. So we all should be giving something to God today because he wants to transform us continuously. He wants to work in our lives continuously, and we just have to allow him to do that. Let's go to him in prayer right now and pray for these needs. Lord, we come to your throne, God. And we come boldly as we should. We bring these needs to you today, God, trusting and believing, God, that you are already working in them. Lord, I pray for Sister Ada right now. Lord, that you would touch her body today. You know her need, God. I pray for Kenny Prince right now. God, touch his heart. Lord, you know the heart, God.
give him all of our praise today. Aren't you excited for what God is doing? Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is moving. You know, and I like that old song. It's not an old song per se, but it says that even when you can't see it, He's working. And I'm glad that He's working. That he's moving. Matthew chapter number 26, beginning at verse number 36. We're going to read down through verse number 46. We're going to kind of read um, a story where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and this is just prior to them coming and, and taking him away, and kind of felt the tug from the Lord. to talk to us today. It says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther, and he fell on his face, and he prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and says unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and he found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy. And he left them. He went away again, and he prayed the third time, saying the same words. And then cometh he to his disciples, and he said unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. I want to focus in on that verse number three that we read, verse number 38, the third one we read, where Jesus says unto Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he says, my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry you here and watch with me. 
I feel that God has given me a word for this moment while he tarries. If you would, if you just put your Bible down and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer that he would speak to us today, that he would minister into us, and that God would just be God in our midst. Lord, we love you. God, we ask right now that your anointing would begin to just flow in this place, that it would rest with us, that you would speak to us, God. Lord, we need your anointing to flow, let it flow from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right, that we would be consumed by you and your word right now. God, we ask that you would help us open up our hearts, that we would receive it from you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We find here you can be seated. Story. True story. On the night that Judas would betray Jesus this was following the Last Supper. It is following what had taken place that night. It is following um, the First Communion and the, and, and the, and the foot washing and, and all of the things that would take place on that day. I know we've covered so many of those things over the past couple of months. And here we find them. And Jesus realizing fully what is taking place. Now Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, they're not, they're not yet aware of what's taking place. They don't realize that they are going with Jesus for one final time. In fact, they believe that this is just the normal inner circle going somewhere for a little while. And so they don't place the same amount of emphasis. I believe that if they did in fact know that this would be the last time that they would gather this close to Jesus in the flesh, that their eyes would have stayed wide open. Mm -hmm. That they would have ensured that there would have been no sleeping and the heaviness would have transitioned from themselves to him. Yes. They would have been aware of what was going on they would have been aware of what they needed to do. And so they're gathered here in this garden, in this place called Gethsemane, the name we hear so often. And Jesus begins to talk to them and tell them that he is sorrowful and he is heavy knowing what is going to happen. He gives them a prelude, if you will, saying, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Christ with them, tarry with me, watch with me, stay with me. And then Jesus left. He went and he found a place in that garden and it says that he fell on his face and he began to pray, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. This blood that would be shed, but, but not the will of the flesh, but rather the will of the Spirit be done. When Jesus returned to Peter and, and the two sons of Zebedee, he found them asleep. Right. And he calls out Peter and he says, could you not watch with me or could you not tarry with me for one hour? He said, watch and pray. Otherwise, you'll be entered into temptation. The spirit is willing. But our flesh is weak. So Jesus would leave again. And once again, he would leave them to tarry while he is tarrying in the garden. Only for their eyes to grow heavy once again, the sleep enter into them. You'll note that when Jesus returns a third time, though, he doesn't even bother to wake them. Instead, decides it does no good, but while I tarry, I will go for it. So he goes a third time, he prays the same prayer, and he comes to the disciples, waking them up to tell them that they can go to sleep. Now, 
I remember hearing those words sometimes. It's time to wake up. You need to go to bed. You'll say it to the kids. You need to wake up. It's time for you to go to bed. And that's what Jesus does here. He wakes them up just to tell them that my time of tarrying is finished. And the moment is at hand. Go ahead and go on and rest because you're going to need it. But I thought and I, I, I was meditating and in prayer on this topic of while Jesus tarries. You see, here we find the flesh of Jesus tarrying. But I am well aware of the fact that Jesus is currently tarrying. Waiting for the moment for his return. And so I began to think, if Jesus is tarrying in heaven, waiting for his return, what is he calling us to do? Is he calling us to tarry the same way he called Peter to tarry? Peter, I'm going to tarry just a little bit longer in this garden. Would you pray and watch with me? So, what must we do? We must watch and pray. Yes, right. What does scripture say? That we should be watching for the parting of the sky. For while he tarries, we should be waiting yes. his return. However, we cannot just watch, but we must also pray. And what must we first pray? We must first pray that we enter not into temptation. Jesus made it very clear to Peter, the spirit's in the right place. But your flesh, your flesh is weak. Your flesh by nature, by design is sinful. It is flawed due to the sins of Adam. But the spirit... The spirit can carry where the flesh will hinder. And so, if we follow the direction that God laid out this day, it is that we would watch and that we would pray for ourselves first. Right. Lord, lead us not into temptation. Order our steps. Guide us. Direct us. Carry us where we need to be carried. Lord, let me be strong enough to submit my flesh to your spirit that I could do the works that you have for me. We must pray for the self. It is very important that we do not sidestep this important step. Imagine, if you will, what is taking place in the garden, and yet Jesus is telling Peter, pray for you. Pray for yourself. For in this moment, do you need more of the Spirit? And I believe that while Jesus was carrying in that garden, awaiting the crucifixion, the end of the flesh, that likewise you and I, as we await the end of the earth, waiting while God is carrying, must also pray for the self. Do not allow ourselves to forsake us in our prayers. It is important. We must pray for the self. But he is tarrying. And his return is coming. I know those of you that are here Wednesday night in the adult class or you watch it going over understanding the end time and seeing the signs of the things that have been and will be. 
watching for the return of Jesus. Amen. And I know that scripture says that we should pray that his return would draw nigh. That we should pray, let it come, come quickly. You know, I I don't know when his return will be. I don't know when the hour is coming. But if I'm just speaking with you, I don't think it's tonight. Because there's still work to be done. And I believe that Jesus is saying, I'm tarrying just a little while longer. But it is so that you can do what I need you to do. Right. No. Peter, I need you to watch and pray. Yes. Right. I need you to watch and pray. So I believe that Jesus is crying out. I am tarrying just a little while longer. I don't know what a little while is to God. I realize one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. That time transcends God. <laughs> or God transcends time. God has the final say. He's over all of it. He can stop it. He can start it. Right. He yeah. will finish it. Amen. Amen. And I know that he is going to return. I know that because the word of God says that. It says that he is going to God. Amen. Right. It says that there's going to be a couple and they're going to be lying in the bed and, and one's going to be taken and the other's going to be left. Mm -hmm. I know he's coming. But right now he tarries. And while he tarries, we must pray. Yes. Pray. So after we have prayed for ourselves, we must pray. Pray for the field. Hebrews makes it plain that we should pray for the field. And if we are praying for the field, then we must pray for the laborers. Right. Jesus talking to his disciples, declared these words, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Uh -huh. And so he says, pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. It is important that you and I after we have prayed for ourselves, we pray for this world. And that prayer must be twofold. It is not just for those that are out there, but those that also are in here. Right. That they would have a desire to work in the field. Yes. That they would have a desire to draw from that harvest that is so plentiful. Amen. You see, the harvest, as it is described as being plentiful, is a work that God has already established. Right. It is already there. What's it say? It says, one plants the seed, another waters, but God gives the increase. Yes. The, the harvest that is grown has grown because of God. And it is there. And he describes it as plentiful. Enough for everyone. Everywhere. He would say those laborers, those that will go out to that field. And that will bring in that harvest. There's not enough of them. And so we must pray that more would come. Yeah. Think about it. Because where can the laborers come from except we bring them out of the field to send them back into it? Yes. Or perhaps we pray, Lord, give us boldness that we would go forth and labor yes. in your kingdom. Yes. God, that you would order the steps of my 
brother. Right. That you would order the path of my sister. That they would go to the place where they are needed in order to bring in the harvest. And so we pray for self, but we pray, we pray for the laborers. Why? Because we need the laborers to be directed down the right paths. We need the laborers to have the right words. We need the laborers to have the right spirit. Yes. Amen. We need the laborers to have boldness. And we need the laborers to be willing. Amen. The harvest is already there. Right. The harvest is already ready. Right. But we must pray for the laborers. Yes. Man. Strengthen them. Pray. Encourage them. God would use them in his work. So we must pray for our fellow laborers. <coughs> we must do it while he still tarries. Yes. Because it won't be long and that cloudy sky will part and a trumpet will blare, and Jesus will ride in. It will happen. And so, while he tarries, we must first pray. We must first pray. But then, what must we do while we wait? Now, we should never cease praying. We should always be in a place of prayer, not physically every moment in a, in a physical bound location, but always mindful, always sensitive to prayer, not leaving the mindset that I can be with God at any moment. What else? What else must we do? What else must we do while he tarries? Well, we have to return to the former things, the first things. Mm -hmm. It says this, partly, while you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly while you became companions of them that were so used for you had compassion of me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God you might receive the promise. Amen. For yet a little while and he shall he that shall come will come and he will not tarry right. any longer. But the just shall live by faith. And if any man draw back Scripture says, my soul shall have no pleasures in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We must ensure every day, in every moment, that we return to our first love which is for the love of Jesus. He tarries but for a little while, but he is going to come, and when he comes, he will not tarry any longer. When those clouds begin to part, there is no, wait a minute! But we have to be aware of where we are 
that we would have patience and confidence knowing that he loves us and we love him and that we would have faith in him, not unto ourselves, not unto us, but unto him. That we would hear, that we would receive and so how then do we ensure that we are returning and that we are in that place? James made it very clear. He said, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. But for he beholdeth himself and goes his way and straight forth forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Right. For pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. James laid out not, not just a recommendation, but really he laid out a command. In his letter, where he said, Take off that which is dirty while he tears. Don't just hear and don't just read. Right. But move, work, step in. For one that just hears, and sets high in a pew somewhere, but doesn't live like God desires. The man of religion, but not a man of relationship. And God says, while I tarry, I want relationship. And if you have relationship, that what you have is pure religion and it's undefiled before God. And when you have it, what do you do? You go and you visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. And you remain unspotted from the world. I was thinking as I've been kind of walking around the property a little bit more than probably usual different places anyway and kind of envisioning things and I thought what good is it at all right. if while he tarries yeah. I don't do what he desires Or what good is it all if I do what he desires on this side, but not on this side? For while he's tearing, he is commanding, walk with me and reach the lost. I got news for you. I know he's carrying, but he's returning, and I want to walk as close to him as I can. Yes, yes. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Oh, yes, God. I'm not looking to see how far I can get over here right. and still touch him. Come on. 
I'm not content with just the hem of his garment. I'm not content with just the lip. I want to walk as close as I can. Yes, Lord. I don't want to be within an arm reach. I want to be touching him. Yes, amen. At all times. And while I'm walking with him, I want to be reaching as far as I can, brothers. Because I believe that that is what God is calling us to do in this hour. Amen. Amen. That while he is carrying, that we just keep moving. Don't go to sleep. Don't let up. Don't let the heaviness of this world bring you down. Right. But I believe we just need to listen to what Jesus is saying. Peter, tarry you here and watch with me. If we're watching with him, our attention is affixed in the same direction. It's not me over here and him over there and thinking, well, we're in the same place, so it's all okay. But let me be mindful to watch and tarry with him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He would move. That he would work. Yes. Hallelujah. God has great things in store. Yes, he does. I'm excited to see what God does in his kingdom. Yes, he is. You know, I've got to, I've actually got to get myself out of the mindset of I can't wait to see what God does in our church. Uh -huh. Right, right. But I've got to get in set. I can't wait to see what God does in his kingdom. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. God is doing phenomenal things. This past week in the Louisiana district, they had their one of their kids' camps, ages 8 to 11, they had 1,100 campers. And I believe the number they said was there, there were 572 children that received the Holy Ghost. Over 50% of those kids. Praise and I'm excited for what God is doing in his kingdom. Yes. Amen. So I want to just watch with him. Yes. And I want to tarry with him. And I want to pray with him. And I want to reach with him. Yes. I want to do what he wants me to do. And go where he wants me to go. I want to open up this altar today. I want us to just find a place and just pray a few things. I want us to pray for ourselves. That our faith would fail not. That we would continuously walk Paths of righteousness. Yes, Lord. Pray for the laborers. Yes. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Pray for those that are not even walking in truth yet, but they are coming. Uh, they are going to labor yes. in the kingdom of God. Right. You might not know their name, but you can pray for their family. You might not know their name, but you can pray for their co-workers. And God will hear those prayers. And the scripture says that they're stored in heaven in life, and they will be poured out yes. at the appointed time. God will move. Let's find a place to pray today and let's let God just minister to us and let's just allow there to be a moving in that spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 He's tearing. But we need to tarry with him. We need to watch while he is there. Oh, yes, Lord.